Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today I'm gonna make the video about my current situation, the current little issue that I have with my orchids. It's maybe a bigger issue, but anyway, I promised you I would do this video earlier, but there were some developments. I kind of failed <laughs> with the first part of the experiment, so I had to do some more tests. Alrighty, so let's get through it really fast because this will be kind of a long video. So I already have some footage from the other days when I did this. I'll show it to you on the screen. Basically what my problem is, I have some issues with desiccated roots, pretty much with the root tips, the new roots that are growing. It's not all over the place. It is maybe, let's say, with some orchids, but the orchids that have issues are enough for me to consider it a problem that I need to fix. And also, I don't like things to be okay. I like them to be great, so that's what I'm trying to do. So let's take, for example, the Victoria Regina, and you'll see on the screen right now the issues. The roots are affected by something, obviously. What it is, well, it's really hard to tell and I'm in a sort of a dilemma right now and that's why I'm testing a lot of things. The roots don't necessarily look like they have root burn, which is a problem that I faced last year in the summertime. What they actually look like is that they're desiccated somehow or something pinches them or things of the sorts. And I looked in my medium, I looked for pests, I don't see anything that can feed on the roots. I also come at night, there's really nothing feeding on the roots. There are some sort of insects, but most of them sit on the algae that accumulates. They don't sit on the roots necessarily unless they're passing by, so I've eliminated that. I don't think I have any pests munching on the roots, but the damage looks really, really weird. It doesn't look like a burn, it just looks like something affects them. So I've tried to eliminate all of the possibilities because there are such inconsistent results and issues that I cannot draw a conclusion. Now, the first video I wanted to make addressed an issue that I will present first, but then I had some complications that made me question my theory and I'm trying some other things. My first theory is, moisture related. The damage that I see happens in Leca and Ceramis and even on the clay pot and I did some tests. As you might know, clay is porous and it absorbs water and you will see on the screen the absorption rate. All of these materials absorb every bit of water that comes in contact with them, which is a good thing because they retain water and then through evaporation makes the air more humid, it hydrates the orchid, everything is okay. Problem is what happens when the roots dry or actually when the medium dry? My first theory is that the medium that I use, the clay medium and also the pot, which is clay, starts to desiccate the root tips, which are the most sensitive part of an orchid root. And the problems that I see are mainly on the root tips, not necessarily the entire root, which is protected by that vellum. And the root tip is quite sensitive until it forms that protective layer it takes a while. So I've started to search on the internet if anybody has issues of the sorts and I did find an answer similar to my theory on a forum on Orkin board. So I'll show you on the screen right now somebody has issues with the root tips that touch Leca in semi-hydroponics. They just seem to burn in their opinion. I'm not sure if it's a burn or what the cause is. I don't see a picture but I see one of the replies from Ray from First Ray's Orchids and you might have heard about this company or this person. He is somebody who knows a heck of a lot more about hydroponics, clay medium, leca than me. So I take into consideration what he says. Now, one of the possible causes for this damage is that if leca gets very, very dry, it will practically suck the moisture from the root tips. And that looks like a very, very valid explanation for the issues that I am encountering. As I was saying, I don't think they are fertilizer burns and they're just so inconsistent that it cannot be fertilizer burn. My Vandas are bare rooted, they get fertilizer every time I water, they get the same water, they don't have issues. So there has to be something with the clay itself. Now I am soaking clay, I am cleaning it, I'm cleaning the dust. And I had my theory that dust is actually absorbing the water, but I'm seeing weird things happening on perfectly clean leka, not even ceramics. So that theory makes a lot of sense for me. Therefore, I developed a little experiment. So I took the Victoria Regina, I unpotted it, I potted it in a plastic pot, not a ceramic one, and plastic does not absorb anything. I used again the inorganic medium and there's a reason for that. 
I unpotted so many orchids this weekend because it bugged me and what I saw was that inside the pot the roots are perfectly fine. I didn't take photographs of the orchids that I unpotted but I do have one of the cattleyas. I featured it in a video but here you go the image once again. Inside the pot roots are looking perfectly fine so if it's a problem with some toxicity of the sorts or the dust or the material itself it would show inside the pot as well but my main problem is on the top layer and also the rim of the pot. Roots also do this when they touch the rim of the pot so pretty much the areas where things dry out more right inside the pot things do not dry out as much they might always stay a little, little bit damp and that might be enough for the clay to not absorb the water from the root tips right so what i did was use the inorganic medium once again but on top I used rocks. Now here's where I failed with the experiment. I was so impatient that I went in the garden, found some rocks that did not look porous to me, did not look like they would absorb anything. I washed them and I also bleached them. Now because I thought they would not absorb anything, I just rinsed them really fast and used them as a top layer. My main concern is to provide a top layer which is not porous, which does not withdraw water. Now by the end of the video that I initially filmed, I noticed that the rocks seem to dry pretty weird. It looks like they do withdraw some water right but I've already done it and I just wanted to see the result and now comes the part where I'm gonna show you this result so yesterday I did what I just showed you and today let's take a look at the orchid today things are not looking very very okay those rocks were soaked in bleach and then I didn't soak them in water once again I just rinsed them really really well Theoretically, if they're not absorbent, they should not absorb the bleach, right? Well, maybe they were a little bit absorbent and they kind of damaged the roots. Now, this does not look like the initial damage that I showed you. This happened actually in about four hours. Now, I don't know of any material that dries a root so fast, not even Leka or Ceramis or the pot themselves. It took longer than that. Within four hours, I had damage on the roots. Therefore, I concluded maybe those rocks were not good and maybe they actually withdrew some chlorine, some bleach, and there you go, messed up my roots. What's funny is that inside the pot, where are the roots? Roots are still okay, they didn't suffer. So that's what makes me think it was the chlorine. So these are the roots inside the pot. They didn't get the chlorine, but the roots on top of the pot, they did. This was one that kind of escaped, luckily enough. But all of these, this happened in four hours. I don't think it's a coincidence. I think it was the rocks and my mistake. And I kind of blew the experiment. So what I did was just go to the pet shop, find some decorative rocks. I tested them. They're not porous at all. Water stays like a drop on them. It doesn't dry up like it did on the rocks. Also, I tested them with the TDS. I soaked them in water. They don't leach out any salts, any calcium or things of the sorts. They're just some rocks that are really, really glossy actually. I purchased them white because I didn't find anything more natural than this. It was either white, either the colors of the rainbows. Huh? I chose white. So yesterday evening, I removed all of those rocks and I put the white rocks and we'll see what happens. But pretty much I spoiled this experiment. Therefore, I needed to test some more because I have some other doubts in my mind right now. So because this happened, it might have been the rocks in the garden that I used but it might also be something else because I did another thing with this orchid. I ran tap water through the medium and everything. Now, I did not have any reason to suspect the tap water until now because they're just so inconsistent results. I sometimes use tap water to flush something and sometimes it just so happens that I don't get to store enough osmosis water, so I just use tap water. Now, if tap water had an issue, I would not have roots growing perfectly fine on the dishes of my pots, right? Water accumulates there. Obviously, chlorine and everything will accumulate there as well. So the roots that touch the dishes of my pots should die instantly from the tap water, right? They don't. So at this point, I'm not sure if it was the rocks or the tap water. I will consider both of them and I will conduct further experiments. So let me show you what I prepared. Okay, so this is the first example. I uh, did film when I repotted it, but I deleted the footage, yay. But I'll show you what I mean. This is the Sideria japonica. I've already repotted this one. So let me show you the damage. This orchid was sitting in its pot tilted, like so. These were roots that were growing right at the surface of the medium. They were not touching anything. These were roots that were touching. This one was touching the pot and the other one down there was touching the medium. Both of them have damage, as you can see. And these roots that were not touching anything, although they got watered, that's the issue, they are perfectly fine. So I purposely placed this orchid straight so the root touches these pebbles just to see what happens. And then this root, which was perfectly fine, I tried to make it stay a little deeper in the pot, go inside the pot and see what happens when it touches ceramics and leka and all of the other things. The difference is this is not a clay pot, it's a plastic pot. 
and also it's transparent we'll see what the roots do and another difference i did not use tap water on this orchid i used osmosis water for the flush whenever i repot orchids i like to flush because the medium just arranges better problem is this medium was boiled and it was boiled in tap water but theoretically chlorine should evaporate like that right so we'll see if chlorine is an issue or not i just used osmosis water today on this orchid so we'll see what happens this is another orchid that I opted to do the very same thing too because I discovered something interesting inside the pot and I do still have the footage for this one. So I unpotted the orchid and what I noticed is that the roots inside the medium were okay up to a point and you can see the tip has a little damage, then it continues to grow. Now I placed the orchid on top so I get a sort of an idea where that root was located and what I found is that the root actually touched the rim of the pot but inside the medium. Now, the thing is that pot was kind of tiny, it was drying out pretty, pretty fast because this is a very tiny orchid. So that would kind of support my theory that it's a desiccating thing issue because the moment the root touched the side of the pot, which is porous, which draws water, it got damaged. And then it continued to grow probably as I watered. So this is an interesting case. Pretty curious to see how this one develops. I did place the root somewhere here. I hope you can see it. Um, I hope it's gonna go to the side and we can see it better. But yeah, it will take a little time for this one to develop more roots and see what's happening. But yeah, this is part of the experiment as well. And what I found in the pot was quite interesting. Okay, the interesting part of the experiment. This is my Epidendrum or Epicalia el Atio Pinta. This orchid has some issues. As you can see, the roots that are pretty shallow, so they are on the upper layer of the medium, are damaged as well. It has one single root, which is an aerial root, which is okay, it doesn't have damage. And even though I kind of tried to water it, I didn't water it as consistent. So I'm trying to test if the ceramis has an issue. And I'm also trying to test the tap water. So what I did with this orchid, I tested it for fusarium, so it doesn't have fusarium, but I also potted it in organic medium. And I have to tell you the compo medium is, in my opinion, atrocious. I would never buy this again, but it's the only option that I have here. I need to test organic versus inorganic as well, just to have a correct assessment, right? We need to take into account all possibilities. Now, what I did with this orchid is, of course, potted it in a plastic pot, not a clay pot, so we can see what happens to the roots. I placed bark or whatever this thing is around it. And also, I went to the sink and I used tap water, not osmosis water, and I made sure that I wetted the tip of this aerial root. Now, if there's something wrong with my tap water, we're gonna see it on this root because this root has been growing for quite a long time right now and the tip did not see water because it was just too high. So with this orchid, I am trying to see two things. The inorganic ceramics like a thing and also I want to test the tap water, see if it has any issues. At this point, I'm questioning everything. Now back there, we have another one. This is the only survivor of the Sideria japonica that had a lot of keikis. Again, with this one, I had damage. I filmed as well. Let me show you on the screen. So again, this orchid had its roots, let's say pretty shallow because the pot was not big and you can see the damage. What I did with this orchid is again, pot it in organic medium. Again, I'm testing inorganic versus organic, but it was watered with osmosis water. So this medium did not see any tap water at all. It is just osmosis water in this medium right now. You can see how atrocious it is, but yeah. So with this orchid, I am trying to see if the roots start to grow and I think I did leave some tips somewhere to see. No pretty impossible but at some point they will start to grow if they grow and we will see them so we'll see if the roots actually grow better in organic versus inorganic at this point it doesn't really matter what i believe and what my opinion is i am trying to test everything just to be thorough so that's the difference between these two this one received tap water even the aerial root and that one received osmosis water so pretty much that's the reason why I'm testing so many things. At this point, I'm willing to take everything into account, even the tap water, and furthermore, even the osmosis water. If we have issues with my osmosis water, I'm gonna get some bottled water and do experiments there. At this point, I am much more inclined to believe it is a desiccating issue, like Ray mentioned, because as you can see, clay, as good as it is when it's dry, it actually absorbs water, it's hygroscopic, if you will. So it makes perfect sense to me for a root tip, which is really sensitive to simply get dehydrated. What I had happen right now on my Victoria Regina, the fact that I spoiled this experiment, I did not experience until now. Any damage that I got was in time, it wasn't in four hours. That's why I think it deserves further research. And I don't think this is conclusive, I think this is just my own stupidity at work here, so yeah, I was just too anxious. But there you go. 
go. This is the experiment. This is the issue. It's not necessarily the biggest issue in the world. If I think about it, there are roots in the pot. Everything is okay. And even my boyfriend tell me, well, why don't you just make sure that on the top things stay moist until the roots go inside the medium and call it a day. That's the thing. It's not excellent. It's not perfect. It has flaws. It has issues. I'm not interested in flaws and issues. And with organic, you have flaws and issues. And I'm trying to find something with as less flaws and issues as possible, but this is a major flaw for me. So that's why I'm babbling too much about it right now. Anyway, it's been bugging me. It's a thing that bugs me and I really want to solve it. And of course, I'm going to share everything with you guys. But if you guys experience something similar or what I just said right now kind of adds up to something you're suspecting as well, do let me down below in a comment. The sooner we figure this out, the better. We just have to figure out if this fix is too complicated and not worth it or it's an easy fix or you know, things of the sorts. Try to make this worthwhile and not a hassle and see if it's viable on the long run. We're not interested right now to have beautiful flowers now or in a year. We're interested to have beautiful and healthy orchids in the next five years, in the next 10 years and so on. So that's the point. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video. Hope you found it interesting. Do share with me your opinions and your observations and your suspicions. If you have links to show me about discussions, about clay, about leka, semi-hydroponics and so on, do let me know in a comment below. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching. I'll end it here because this is already a long video. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid videos and plants videos and updates and all of my experiments and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video and with that said i'll see you guys next time bye okay and to further add to this video let's make an update on the semi-hydroponic thing of course i'm not focused there we go this is the root growing in the mixture of leka and ceramis and she's uh, she's growing quite well so this one is going okay, but the other ones, as you can see, ceramis is molding. So full ceramis, too much for the season I am in, but I can see it work pretty well in those environments which are extremely dry, extremely dry and windy, where Leka fails. Leka is failing, once again, it is dry, it is only moist here, and that's not okay. If indeed Leka absorbs moisture from the roots, even in semi-hydroponics, this is not a solution. So for my climate and conditions right now, Leka is not okay. Full ceramics, not okay. Mixture, as you can see, works pretty damn good.